morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Welcome to Open Office Hours. I am Crystal Hinkle. I'm part of the team here. I'll let the ladies introduce themselves as well. Hey, everybody. I'm Tatiana. Welcome to Open Office Hours. Hi, everyone. I'm Brandy, and I'm excited to see everyone today. Awesome. Okay, so few just order like lines of business. Um, for those of you that are joining us as a repeat time, thank you so much. Welcome back. Um, we're happy to have you. For those of you that are joining for the first time, um, we use the Q&A for any questions that you have. We try to get through them as quickly and efficiently as possible. If there's any that we don't know, we'll tell you we don't know. So we're not just going to skip it and move on. So we'll tell you or like we'll say we're waiting for an answer or something like that. Um, and so we'll kind of like dive into those questions here in just a sec. What we've implemented into open office hours because we thought it might be helpful and we're trying to cover things that we hear questions often about and then also the fact that you know synchro is a fully combined arm and psa solution so it's worth us showing off the power of that and showing you how to make more money with synchro so the deep dive that um, we're going to do today and tatiana is going to take it from here is all of the amazing ways to efficiently add time um, so obviously we want you to make more money and we want you to do it in super efficient ways so i will let tatiana take it over from here Can you hear her, Brandy? No. Tatiana, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yep. Sorry about that. <laughs> I was trying to say that for some reason my internet is cutting in and out a little bit. We've been having some weird stormy weather here. So uh, just a heads up, if I cut out, you guys can take over. So yes, um, I missed a little bit of what Crystal said, but yes, today I'm happy to show you guys we're going to talk about the most efficient ways to charge time. So as a modern MSP platform, we want to see you succeed with Synchro. And a huge part of that is we want to we want you to make more money, whether that's being more profitable or more efficient. So in the next couple minutes, we'll focus on how to make sure you're not leaving any of that money on the table, uh, things that will help remind your text to add time, automations available to you. So here's a quick list of topics we'll cover today. Uh, first one is rounding up time automatically, PowerShell module availability, uh, all the different ways to add time to a ticket, the pending ticket charges report, adding pending ticket charges to different types of invoices, and then lastly, the auto charge for appointment type. So whatever your billing setup might be, our billing in Synchro is super flexible to accommodate whatever your priorities are, your processes, what makes sense for you your business model, the type of customers that you guys are serving. So let's go ahead and dive in. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we will start kind of at the top of my list here. So first one is pretty straightforward. It's rounding time up automatically. If you guys head over to the admin section, you all know where that is and head over to your ticket preferences, scroll down and select additional settings and way towards the bottom, you'll see this section here, the ticket time around up to number of minutes. So sometimes people just ask, have this as part of their contract. MSPs say we, it's a minimum of a five minute charge any time that we create a ticket or respond or anything like that, or maybe it's 15, whatever it might be, uh, this is a useful setting. Again, if your texts are uh, forgetting to add time or anything like that, this helps you make sure that that is a consistent charge there. Uh, the next one on the list is our PowerShell module. So within, script, uh, within Synchro, our scripting power, uh, our scripting module, we believe, is one of the most powerful on the market currently, and there's a couple different reasons why the most kind of current one that I'll show you today is has to do with our PowerShell module. So in here, you have the capability to, as you're writing your script here, or as you're editing from the community script library, any script that you've pulled in, you can include these commands. You can say, I also want Synchro to create a ticket for me. I wanted to add time to a ticket. You can specify how much time you want it to add. You can say this, if I'm gonna be charging for the time or not, again, depending on the type of billing model that you have set up with your customer, you can then go ahead and say, let's go ahead and clear the RMM alert and automatically close the ticket. So again, as your, as your script, the, the script that you're using here is automatically resolving whatever issue the endpoint is experiencing. You have the capability in here to add these commands to add that time. Then you can actually use this script as part of our automated remediation as well. So there's a couple different ways to get there. I'll show you to how to access automated remediation through the assets and RMM section. You just go under the actions and automated remediation section here. 
And so again, uh, whatever set of conditions you, you need to specify here or whatever custom RMM alert you'd like um, to serve as a trigger here, you set the conditions and then you can say, I want Synchro to run this script that has those commands built in that is automatically adding time for you there. So um, hopefully that is helpful to you. That was the second one on my list. Uh, now let's go through and kind of get back a little bit to the basics of all the different ways to add time to a ticket. So we'll go ahead and I'm going to just create a brand new ticket and we'll go just straight from the beginning. So I like personally using the magnifying glass. That's my favorite way to create a ticket just because it saves you guys a couple clicks. It'll automatically attach the asset right here. And so again, trying to make things as efficient as possible for you guys. So when creating a new ticket, I'm just going to enter some details into here and go ahead and create the ticket. So there's, I like to say there's four different ways to track time on a ticket. My favorite that I'll show you first is straight within the communication section. So in this section here, you can say how you want to communicate with your customer, whether you want to send them an email. If you have SMS enabled, you can send them a text. So let's go ahead and say hello to our customers. And we're going to specify as well how long or what type of work that we're doing. You can specify how long you're doing it, whether you're billing for that time or not. And you can automatically update the status of the ticket all in one fell swoop right in this one section here. So again, um, having without having to go through through to different sections. So that's the first way to add time. Second way to add time is just to use the ticket timer. Uh, I picked this tip up from Brandy. This is a really easy way if you're gonna be billing for a remote session, uh, you can go ahead and select remote access or whatever labor type that your techs need to specify there. But just quickly starting the timer and then launching into remote sessions straight from the ticket, really useful, really efficient. Again, you don't have to go through a ton of different tabs to try to get to where you're trying to go. So that is the second way to add time is just using the ticket timer. Third way to add time is actually when you are viewing the ticket timer log. So let's say you guys are going on, on location, you know, hopefully when things open up and you need to do some type of, uh, you know, maybe the first meeting with the customers, see what they currently have in place, whatever it might be. And you don't want to constantly fidget with the timer. You can say, yep, I'll, I'll be on site for a couple hours. You can add any notes that you need to in here. This is the third way to add time. This is also where I'll specify too the differences between charging time or not because as you can see we have four different time entries listed here but if but i'm only billing or charging that time to one of them so if we go to the ticket timer charges here you'll see that only that one line item is listed here so again highly dependent on the type of billing that you guys have set up for your customer i'm going to go ahead and just charge a couple more of these just so you are able to see the differences there so the last way to add time is just pulling it in in this final kind of review stage. So ticket is complete, issues resolved, customers happy. You can then add more labor into here if you wanted to. That's the fourth way to add time. And so again, those are all the different ways that you can add time to a ticket. So um, leading into kind of the conversation that we were having about these pending ticket charges here, or just the charges in general, I'm going to show you a quick report that is going to be kind of highlighting what tickets are pending in that pending state. So I'll open this pending ticket charges report here and I'll also show you guys the ticket time by technician report which is super useful again just to make sure your techs and whoever is doing your billing for you is are charging things as anticipated. So again on the ticket you'll see that we have the four different pending ticket charges let's go ahead and just create an invoice straight from here and I'll show you a couple things here. So if we are creating a one off invoice. You literally just create the invoice straight from the ticket. It'll automatically update the ticket status to invoice. You'll have a link to the ticket if you need to make any changes. And here are the four different line items that I meant to charge for. You'll also notice this section here that shows the pending ticket charges. This means that there's a couple other tickets as well as their, their ticket current ticket statuses showing you that there are things that are kind of waiting to be invoiced. So if you need to, you can either go through individually and add them one at a time to this manual invoice that you just created yourself, or you can add all. So if you have more of a manual setup where you, you want to 
try to do this on a once a month basis or however often you're billing your customer and you, you're going to have just a huge list of pending ticket charges right in here, you can just click add all and then your invoice will be ready to go if you wanted to do that process manually. Of course, with Synchro, we want to help you automate as much things as possible. So I'll show you how to do that exact setup that I just did there automatically. So if we go over back over into the invoices section, if you go over to your recurring invoice, I built a special one just for this specific example. We'll take a look at the monthly pending ticket charges invoice. So in here, again, that entire process I showed you is available to be built at a click of a button. So when you're building your recurring invoices, you're really building a template or a schedule that you want your that you want this invoice to follow. So whether you're billing on a monthly basis, on a biweekly basis, it's up to you to specify the schedule. And then right here, just with the click of a button, you can add those pending ticket charges. So you no longer have to manually create the invoice, add all the pending ticket charges. This is gonna create that invoice for you automatically. It'll scoop up all those pending ticket charges. And once the invoice is created, it's just gonna be sitting in your regular list of invoices. I'll show you what that looks like. And so it'll it'll have this kind of double arrow icon that you're seeing here. You can go in here, into here again and view all the pending ticket charges that were pulled in by that invoice that are now part of the invoice in this section here. At that point, you can preview the invoice, uh, preview the PDF email from there, sync it over to whatever accounting software you're using. Again, totally up to you, the process that you follow from there. So um, that is all the different ways to add time to a ticket, pull in those pending ticket charges. Let's go ahead and take a look at the reports that I was showing you as well. So the pending ticket charges is one that's just going to give you a running list of all the pending ticket charges. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It's right there in the name. So again, it'll show you the status, the total that's outstanding that you have not yet billed, but time that you did charge. Another report that's super useful is if you go over to the tech hours report. This is going to show you on a tech per tech basis, as well as which customer. It'll give you a link to the ticket. But here, let's say that you your your techs do need to be charging time for Larry's business. You can go ahead and just add those charges straight from here. You don't have to go back into the ticket and add that information manually, if that makes sense. So those are the two reports that I recommend. And while we're on this topic, real quick, I'll show you another thing in those ticket settings section. If you go again to the admin section and you head over to your ticket preferences and additional preferences i'll show you if you again if your billing model is that you want to charge time to all the tickets you want your customer to see every every uh, basically job that your techs have done and you can go ahead and just select this button right here that says charge time by default so that is what i have currently available and let me know if you guys have any questions hopefully that's helpful to you that's so good, Tatiana. I think there there are a couple of questions that I'll just grab really quickly. Um, one is, so when you add any pending ticket charges to an invoice, it's asking if you can group those pending charges by ticket. You can't necessarily group them. However, um, in that section that Tatiana was just showing you, and I can show you, because there was a few other settings right there that I think might be worth just showing while we're here. Um, if we go to ticket preferences and I'm also in Spokane. So if you see my internet go weird, just tell me um, if we go to additional settings here. So yes, not only can you charge the time by default. Um, the other thing is that you can require time entries on ticket comments. I forgot to mention to talk to you about this one too, Tatiana, because I think this one's super helpful too. Just yes. so technicians don't forget to charge time. Um, talked about the ticket timer roundup, but this is where like, if you want to customize the text for the ticket timer. So this is where like, you can grab, like I have a couple that I've used here in the past, but if you just use this little um, tool tip here, you can get the different tags. So if you wanted it to be, make sure that the ticket number, so it won't actually be grouped together, but at least you can have each one start with like the ticket number. So it's easily to, to tell that they're all together. In addition to that, another question was, can you auto sync to QuickBooks online? So if you have that integration set up, it'll do that automatically. So whenever you create an invoice, it'll automatically um, sync those over. There was another one, um, uh, just that last thing that was on Tatiana's list that I was going to grab and show you was how to auto charge for certain appointment types. So the thought process here, so if you have, as you can see, you can customize different appointment types. Um, 
So maybe you, with everything that's going on, maybe you've added totally different types of appointments. Maybe you've always charged a trip charge based upon if you have to go on site, whatever that might be. For example, so I've got this pickup appointment type. I have it set, so this trip charge, it looks like plain text, but actually it's pulling from our products and services. So anytime I create a ticket, and attach this appointment type, it's gonna auto attach that trip charge to the ticket. So you don't have to remember to do it later. Um, so I think that it's, I, I actually don't even think that I have to start fresh from a ticket. So or like from a new ticket, I think I can add that appointment type. So whatever ticket I have here, I can just hop into that ticket. If I head down to appointments, I can create a new appointment. And if I select this pickup as the appointment type and add that, uh, that appointment here, um, oh, did I have a weird buffer time? Okay, so anyways, then if I go to add or view charges here, you'll see trip charge was added to this ticket just by applying that appointment. So this is another quick way to just make sure you're not forgetting to charge certain things that are included in that contract. Um, Okay, so one thing I'll note too is we just went over like a gazillion different things in a short amount of time. These are recorded. They are, they will be posted to our YouTube channel. Um, I think this one actually might have to wait until Monday to be posted, but just letting you know that this will be available. Um, I wanted to address, uh, Derek posted this immediately right when we started the open office hour. So I wanted to just make sure I hop over and um, grab this question in case you're waiting and you have to leave. Um, but the question is, uh, how can you uh, move an asset from one policy to another? So there's several things like you could just select that, like whatever the asset is, you could just go here and you could change the policy. So you could do that in mass or like on one individual asset. The other way, and this is, a, this is interesting because this comes up often, like based upon the UI, sometimes it's not necessarily noticeable that you can Click that. Um, just letting you know you can do that. Um, you can change the policy straight from there. Um, okay, let me grab this last one that I, I'm just gonna go in order from the top and then I'll hand it over to Brandy. Um, looking for some mailer help and I just, it's a quick one. Um, it's just asking about essentially overriding. So I'm just gonna go to mailer. Um, I won't go into too, too much detail. I'll just answer the question here. So um, let me just grab a custom one. So there's different options. So obviously you can send to a saved customer search or you can save to an, a saved asset search. This is going to override, like if this is like a one-time blast email and then you select a specific subset of customers, I mean, it says we'll go to all customers. If you select a saved customer searches, it's only gonna go to the saved customer. It will override that all customer setting. Um, and then the last thing was how can or how to use template tags as when I click on the preview, all I see is the tags exactly as they are cropped into the email body. I think at this point, um, you might have to just um, send like a test one to yourself and just make sure that it's right. Cause I think that, yeah, the preview, I think will just show the tags. Um, so yeah, I think you have to send a test one. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab a couple that are just in a row here. So Andy's asking about suggestions on how to push out feature updates. So things like the latest Windows 10 feature updates to version 2004. Synchro patching doesn't seem to see the feature update. So things like 1909, 1903, um, they don't necessarily play too nice with any RMM. Um, our feature pack does not include those updates. So you'll want to do it via scripting. It's the best way to handle it. Uh, I have even Googled just some of those scripts for updates and I think it should be pretty easy for you to find there. So definitely want to do that via scripting. You can still do that on an individual asset basis or on a, a policy level too. And then, um, well, actually that's one of those things that you could even have a saved asset search for, search for those devices that need uh, that update and you could run a script on those. Uh, and then I have a question about integrating with QuickBook payment. Um, nothing that I've seen um, that we plan to integrate with the merchant services, it doesn't mean it won't happen. Um, but if you're using QuickBooks online, I always like to let people know that if you are using their merchant services and it is marked as paid in QuickBooks, it will sync back over to Synchro as paid. So QuickBooks Online does that, uh, which is nice because it, it does allow you to use a different payment processor. 
And then lastly, I'll go ahead and grab uh, Joseph's question. I'm almost certain we'll be moving forward with Synchro. Yay, uh, we're happy to have you. And is there any reason we shouldn't start onboarding clients during our trial? Will our Synchro settings and assets transition seamlessly from the trial to paid account? Absolutely. Um, we want you to use your trial period for time to shift over. Um, I'll also say, you know, if, if it happens to be like, you know, a week or two or something like that where you really need additional time, we want to make sure you have the time to make that transition. Um, just reach out to your account representative. It's going to be one of the three of us and we will gladly add that time for you. We want to make sure that you guys are all set up ready to go when you do go live with Synchro. So that's the goal. Everything will transfer. Yeah, really, really good question. Um, Okay, I'm gonna grab this one from Kyle. Is it, I really like this, so I'm gonna read it, the whole thing. Is it possible to automatically send out instructions with a direct link for a customer to add their credit card info? Would be possible, would it be possible if uh, we could even have it in a widget flow such as customer info issue, enter CC info, sign, um, confirm. If we can't have it in the custom widget flow, having it easy to send out, maybe even automatically when a ticket is created or a lead comes in. Okay, so a couple things on that. Um, I really love that. Like I really, really love that and probably will bring this to the team because um, any way that you can automate like getting that information to your customers. One thing I do wanna show you, I'm gonna head over to the admin section. I believe it's in customer preferences. Correct me if I'm wrong, ladies additional settings. Okay. So a few things, obviously for them to add the credit card, they have to be in their portal. So like having this applied so that any new customer always gets a portal invitation. I think that this is step one. Um, step two would be you also have the ability to create, um, different customer portal, um, like, a default view for the portal. So with that said, if you had portal user permission groups, you can then choose your default. So then maybe your default then, for example, shows um, documentation. And you could create a documentation page that has all of the instructions to set up their customer portal so that when they create their first portal, um, like their login or whatever that looks like. Um, when they log into their portal and they head here, they see your default view that you want them to see. Meaning if you had their documentation down here, you could put in bold how to set up your credit card stuff. So they could easily do that. So that's one way. The other thing that came to mind when it comes to like different ways to automate things you absolutely could set up like a new ticket automation, for example, um, that like if the ticket was new, um, I'm trying to think like if there's different ways that you could use statuses and things like that. I think this is up to your interpretation and what would work best for you. But if you had a ticket automation set up that if like a new ticket was created, um, you could then have like specific actions, which one of them is to send uh, an email. Um, so email customer, and then you can use tags and you could have like a pre-built email that tells them how to do it. So um, just some suggestions, but I love the idea of having it automated like in the widget flow. So I definitely am gonna look into that as well. Okay, perfect. Next question here is from Derek. He says, if you delete or void an invoice, does that make the time go back to be ready to be invoiced? Yes, absolutely it does. I just tested this for you. I'll share my screen real quick, show you guys what he's talking about. But yes, if you go over to an invoice, um, what I did is I, I counted, I think there was like 12 here and if you, 12 current pending ticket charges. And so if you go to any invoice that has line items that for some reason you need to delete the invoice, whatever that reason might be, um, if you go into here and you delete a invoice, this now has two, 
if I delete this specific invoice and I go back and create a brand new invoice, you, it will those two that I just deleted from that current invoice will pop in and there will be now 14 listed here. So you never lose your pending ticket charges. They don't just disappear into thin air. Again, we wanna make sure that you're not losing money on work that you are completing and it's just falling through the cracks of being invoiced. So yeah, that's huge. Um, that is built in automatically for you. Let's see. And then the other question that I was going to answer as well is from Jose. He says, when a job is done, technicians complete the ticket. Then when we invoice it, it reopens the ticket, changing the status to invoiced, but then it's not completed. What is the right procedure to create a ticket, work in the ticket, finish the job and invoice? So I'll share my screen. I'll show you guys a couple things. So what he's talking about is correct. Every time that you create a ticket, an invoice from a ticket. So in any one of these that have not been invoiced yet, if I go back into the ticket and I click make ticket like I showed you guys previously, it automatically changes the status of the ticket to back to invoiced. And so for that, if you guys are working with uh, time to resolution or SLAs or anything like that, that will show up as still being in kind of a pending state. So one workaround that we have, for, and that works for some people, but for others, they want to make sure that that time to resolution has stopped. So one thing I recommend if you go over again to the admin section under the ticket settings. Sounds like this is like the highlight of today's open office hours, which is great. Um, and here you have the capability to go to your additional settings and add an additional setting, any custom status that you want into here. So what I would recommend is building a status that says something like resolved, ready to invoice or resolved and invoice sent. So that way the ticket is complete. Your your techs know that, the, that there's no additional work that needs to be done. And by putting this resolved in front of any custom status here, you'll have the ability to stop that time to resolution, if that makes sense. So I have one in here that says resolved, ready to invoice. So at that point, Point, whether you change that manually from the invoiced to ready to invoice, whatever it might be, um, you could you could do it manually that way to just just change the status. Or if you go over to the ticket automations, here's another one that I I haven't tested, but I think will work. If you go over to your ticket automations, I have in here you can have that status go go automatically to uh, resolved, ready to be invoiced. So I have the condition here last. Ticket last comment subject is completed. And then I want it to change the status to resolved or I want to change the status to uh, resolved, ready to invoice, whatever makes sense for you guys in your workflow. Um, again, this ticket last, uh, ticket last comment subject is within the communication section of the ticket. So if that makes more sense for your text to do it there, or you want to set an automation based off of a different status to move it into that resolved slash ready to invoice, um, you do have that capability uh, to, to choose. It's pretty flexible there. Hopefully that helps. Sweet. Thanks, Tatiana. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to grab this one from Jared about reports. On the customer detail report, there is an there is issue type, issue and type pie charts. I can only find issue type in the ticket settings. In the report, the issues are broken out by issue type and then type are all categorized as none. How can we specify issues and types separately? So this is something that actually comes up quite often. And I think that this just needs to be an update to maybe the verbiage to just make sure it's cohesive throughout the the app, um, so if we go to customer detail report, I'll just kind of show you what he's talking about because it's totally, I, I understand what you're saying. So if we go to Larry here. All right, so you've got tickets by issue, tickets by type here, and then you can also see like you've got type here and you have issue here. So um, the type is actually the custom field type. Um, the issue is like what you select. Okay, so let's do this. I'll show you. Um, let me grab a ticket. Open this in a different screen. Okay, let me grab this ticket here. It doesn't matter. I'll just grab whatever. Okay, so this, it's so funny. So this says type, but really this is the issue from that report. So if you select remote support, you're going to see remote support here. Now, tickets by type here, it's going to be the custom field. So whatever you add here, 
This, so as you can see, like virus removal is one that we often use, which is why on this report you see virus removal of 17. So issue is actually the type in the ticket and tickets by type is the custom field. Um, so hopefully I've not confused you further than <laughs> previously, but yes, hopefully that helps clarify. Awesome, thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a couple here. So I first see a question about creating a ticket from an estimate. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen there. Awesome, are you guys able to see this? Yeah, okay. I know sometimes I talk for five minutes and realize I haven't shared my screen. So um, if you go into your estimates, you can open up any estimate that you have in here, and then you'd be able to either convert it into an invoice or you could just create a new ticket from there. So any light items that you had on there, those would show up. Uh, you can absolutely do that. And then I'll go ahead and grab another question here. Um, someone was asking about using the widget flow or on the website if they're using the apart appointment booking uh, if they can add a description section so i was actually just playing around here um, we'll see if i can find it again but um, if you just open up the admin section and then you go down to custom widgets i went to my appointment setting here and then you can just go in to edit that uh, assuming you already have this set up you can choose your different steps in here when I go into the issue detail um, settings, then I can show issue description, and this will give you that option, um, I believe. So let me just test this really quickly. Um, I'll just show all of these things here. I'll just show everything. And then I'm going to copy this. And I'm gonna put it up here. And I'm gonna choose 12 p.m. And I'll just say Randy test, Randy at testing.com. All right. And here you go. So you are able to enter the details. So you'll just use the custom widget and you'll wanna make sure you add the step for them to enter issue details. So this gives them um, some more control over what their, their issues are. Now you can also use, of course, uh, agent contact forms, which gives them the option to also enter a description. But if you're just wanting to use this flow from your website, then you can absolutely do that. And I hope that helps. Super helpful. Thank you so much, Brandy. Uh, next question here is from Derek. He says, follow up, will the invoice delete deleted in synchro also delete from quickbooks online yes absolutely um, i always reference this on, even on demos just to make sure i'm giving you guys the right information but yes in our knowledge base article i just searched this up for you by um and then it looks like yes if you void or delete in quickbooks for invoices when deleted in synchro yes it will do that for both quickbooks desktop and for online so that's an, a huge um, help as well to not have to go and manually make sure the systems are syncing up in that way so yes that is available and then the other question here from Jeremy, I'm, I'm looking to get a quick response on that one. Cool, I'll go. <clears throat> um, Justin says, I've noticed that if a customer has a company name only, as most business to business customers would, then in many places throughout Synchro, the customer is listed as empty. Is there any workaround for this? Um, uh, not really. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's interesting because yes, it's definitely supporting. Um, you know, if you had like a main contact, that's usually like who you would put as the actual name. Um, but I definitely understand that there is some places where it, it does show up as empty, and it seems a little bit odd. Um, obviously, you can always assign like in tickets and things like that. Signing a contact kind of solves that that sort of thing. But um, definitely, I will pass that along to the team for sure. Um, now, the other one that I was going to grab is uh, from Mark. Is there any way to keep entries on a ticket from being charged on a reoccurring invoice until the ticket is completed. We have charges appearing on an invoice from a ticket that isn't resolved, so charges are being billed prematurely. So as of right now, this is a huge feature request. We want to be able to say only add pending ticket charges if the ticket is resolved. Um, so right now, that is a feature request. 
Um, I can show you like what I know a lot of folks are doing to uh, work with kind of the way that we have things set up right now. But just for those maybe that um, want, need a little bit more context, I'm just going to go into this reoccurring invoice. Tatiana showed this morning um, in great detail, like this is where you can add any pending ticket charges to this reoccurring invoice. So on a ticket anywhere that there has been charged time, it's going to pull that onto this reoccurring invoice. Um, so the feature request would be like up underneath here, you can check the status like of the tickets that you'd want to pull in. So definitely that's a feature request. Um, but one, one workaround here is we showed you in the ticket settings that like if you are tracking time, you can have those set to automatically charge time by default. Um, the way around being sure you're not gonna prematurely bill someone is to have that setting not charge the time by default. And really you're only hitting charge time once, so you can be tracking during the entire, you know, ticket process, but you're only hitting charge time when that ticket is resolved. So a lot of, a lot of folks, what they'll do now is they'll set up almost like a ticket automation where like once that ticket goes into like a certain status, like, you know, resolved waiting invoicing or something like that, then it triggers someone to go into that ticket and just make sure that all the time is charged appropriately. Um, so maybe a little bit more detail than necessary, but that's kind of like the full scope of it for right now. Awesome. Uh, there's just a question from Todd about allowing clients to remote access to their PC through their client portal or another way. Currently, there's not without them being a user. Um, unless you're using one of our third party tools, I have heard quite a few people uh, use the Screen Connect integration uh, and give their clients access that way, but not natively just with Synchro Live. Sorry, I'm still waiting for a couple of responses here from our tech, tech team. Cool. Brandy, did you want to grab that last one then? Or the other one? Oh, you're muted. I can't hear you. Actually, that was uh, one of them. I didn't see that Tatiana had posted. So, yeah. Okay, so we're waiting um, for clarification on Jeremy and Paco's questions. Just so you know, we see the questions. They're in queue. We're waiting. Um, we're going to see if we can get a technical support specialist to help us clear up those questions. Um, let's see here. One question I have is, is there, I mean, we've got, we've got some time. Um, is there any clarification? Does anyone need any clarification on anything that Tatiana covered this morning? Is there any other module that you're like, hey, we've got some time, go into it. Um, I'm seeing a question here, just uh, what is the roadmap for a Linux deployment agent? Um, as of right now, not on the roadmap. Um, I think we're going to continue to develop the Mac agent and make sure that that's solid and out of beta before we would consider that. Um, let's see. Jeremy likes the updates to the mobile app. He says they're nice. So thank you for that feedback. I know they've been working really hard on the mobile app and uh, still a lot to come. Sweet. Um, Mark wants to know, is there any way to CC someone, mainly ourselves, on sent invoices other than adding our email address on each client? Yeah, actually, I think you can do that, can't you? Um, I think if you go, it's been a while since I've been to this section, I believe if you go to admin, because yes, you can, you can add a CC to per individual customer, or I believe that you can just go to invoice preferences, right? Am I doing this right? Preferences, additional settings. And I think you can add BCC all invoices here. Like you could do that on like a global scale there. Or if it's per individual customer, you have to go into each customer and edit and add yourself as a CC. All or nothing basically from these settings and then individually from within. Um, Bia is asking about SNMP monitoring, and it is on the roadmap. So really exciting stuff. We that is definitely on a roadmap. 
I'll take this one from Derek. He says, can you go edit into editing ticket workflow process or walkthrough of ideal ticket process that best matches what Synchro quote unquote wants you to do? So <laughs> super interesting question. So there's, there's a couple things just to say in advance, I'll go ahead and share my screen here real quick. Um, they, there are certain things that we build for you guys based on what you guys request. So it's not necessarily, we don't want to tell you how to run your business. We do want to build a tool that is flexible to accommodate whatever your priorities are. Because again, within Synchro, we do have multiple people that are either internal IT departments or they are, um, you're, you're serving residential only type of customers, or maybe you have have several large enterprise type of customers or maybe you're serving small to medium sized businesses so it's kind of all over the place um, so I don't think there's necessarily a quote unquote best way to accomplish something because again we build stuff that you guys ask us for and so there's multiple different ways to accomplish the same goal so I'll show you guys what he's talking about though for his specific question so what he asked about was ticket workflows. If you go over into the admin section under tickets and workflows, this is where you actually set these up. So for example, I have two separate ones here. You can build, I believe, as many as you want. And so I have one in here that's called the new customer workflow. So if you go in here, this is a, another way to be super efficient with your time and build what you want your text to fill out all within one single page instead of, instead of them having to click around the entire app to collect all the information. So let's say we have a brand new customer, depends on whether they, if you have a storefront, whether they walked in or if you're going on location, you basically build the form that you want your text to fill out. So whether that's, you want them to fill out, obviously probably customer detailed report. Maybe you want to show certain fields or hide them or label some as required. Like if you, if you pay your, if you have a referral program for your customers, and you want to make sure that, that they get whatever kickback off program offering that you have for them, you can label that as required or whatever it might be. Again, you're building the form on this side. Maybe you want your text to automatically start a ticket with kind of any notes that you want them to add. There's all these different sections that you can pull in that help you kind of have everything within one single page. So maybe maybe you're on the phone with them and you don't want them to create a ticket. Uh, it's a new customer. Maybe you need to set an appointment to go on to location. Maybe you also want to pull in a worksheet that will help you um, kind of have a checklist of things to do that have to do with building a new customer, you know, uh, run a certain tool to see where they're current at, currently, where their business is at or whatever it might be. Um, whatever sections, I think you guys get the point, whatever sections make sense for kind of all the steps that you would need to take when you're trying to accomplish a certain type of a task, super useful here with the workflow. So once you build the workflow, if you go into creating a ticket, whoops, um, I'll go into just the regular synchro section again, and anywhere that you can create a ticket um, now you're going to have those workflows listed here. So I have one that's labeled as a default. So if I go back, I'll show you that as well. Uh, you can choose which one you want to be the default. So it looks like new customer workflow is my default one. If I select not default, it'll just go back to the regular ticket section. But in here, again, you can choose that workflow in, in this section. So again, for the new customer workflow, here it is. Now your tech can just go through line by line. They don't have to really think about, oh, did I fill out this information? Did I forget something else? Um, they can just go through and answer uh, everything and collect all the information that you need them to. So um, I think that answers most of that question and hopefully that helps. Am I next? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where we are. Um, I, I have the question or I don't think you've answered uh, Randolph. So is that where we are? Yeah, I think that's where we're we still are. waiting on the first two, I think. Cool. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, Ramoth wants to know, can you archive tickets that have been invoiced or resolved? I only think you can archive customers right now, right? Um, yeah. So just letting you know, though, too, um, I'm just going to share my screen or I'm going to try to share my screen. Um, you can have like default uh, settings here and most, I think by default, it shows up that really in your ticket queue, you're not going to see resolved tickets. They're not, they're not archived or anything like that, but they're, they're going to go away. Um, 
while I have my mic on, I might as well grab a couple that are just quick responses. Uh, Javier, is there a plan to sync unmanaged devices to IT glue, meaning custom assets that do not have an agent installed? I don't believe that's on the roadmap. Um, definitely worth passing along to the team for sure. Um, we do not have an expense module. So most of the time at this point, it's just you use Synchro for all of your you know, day to day and then you, you, most of the, our customers that I talk to are still using like something like QuickBooks to track those expenses. Um, let's see, I think those were the quick ones. Oh, really quick from Eric, two questions. Will mobile app have chat? I would have to find out. I don't know. We're continuing to add a ton of improvements to chat. I mean, you saw this week, we took everybody's feedback and literally just made the changes. So, I mean, that's developing rapidly. Um, and it definitely makes sense to have it on the mobile app and then plans for network discovery. Absolutely on the roadmap. Um, don't have a specific time frame for you though at this point. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Um, love those quick ones. We can just wipe off our list and then it looks nice. Not as many questions in here. <laughs> um, Justin's asking, is there any way to prevent CCs from being removed from a ticket when a client replies to uh, an email from a ticket and they remove people. So unless they reply, all those will drop off. Um, currently, there's not a way to prevent that. Sorry about that. And then um, Brian's asking, how can we automate sending an email to a client when a ticket's closed? So really, really good question. And there's going to be two different ways that you can do this. So I've gone into my admin section. I went under tickets and I went to ticket automations. What you could do is you could just set this up and it could be global and anytime a ticket status is resolved, you can send this particular message. So you could do it this way. Uh, another way that people like to do it is using our mailer. So I can come in, I could set up a custom campaign and I can say, you know, maybe one day after a ticket has been closed and this is where the section would be, um, then you want to shoot them this message and maybe you have a link in here that you want to send them to filling out a survey or something like that. So two different places that you're able to do it, either ticket automations or the mailer. Is it me? I never know. I don't know. <laughs> Tatiana, go. I'll, I'll take this one from Brian. He says, the resolve button on the ticket board is a little scary. It would be easy to close a ticket and never find it again. Even if the work is not complete, can we remove it? Currently, you cannot. I will pass this along as a feature request. So that little checkbox is not able to be removed currently. Um, I think one way around that is if you did have time pending ticket charges that are automatically being charged to the tickets, those pending ticket charges are still going to be a kind of a foolproof way to make sure you don't get lost in the ticket because at that point you can kind of, if you're manually reviewing those pending ticket charges and before you're invoicing, you would see that the, the status is not yet, the ticket isn't actually complete. So hopefully that helps. Sweet. Um, let me grab this one from Joseph. We currently have WebRoot installed via our existing RMM. Is there a good way to update the license on those endpoints to pull them into Synchro, set up WebRoot account, or do I need to uninstall the old WebRoot and then reinstall? So great news for you, Joseph. Actually, there is a migration path. So if you just go to the app card in the app center, uh, let me share my screen and I'll just show that for any of you guys that are also wondering this, if you just go to the App Center um, and you go to the WebRoot card here, it's going to prompt you. I, this, yeah, I've already got like, I think it halfway set up, but it's going to ask you if you um, have an existing and then you go through that path and basically it'll get in touch with our technical support. Um, it needs to like it, it has to like correlate with your um, uh, renewal date for, for WebRoot. So like then once that's all set up, they actually can just migrate it right into Synchro. No uninstall, reinstall. It just transfers the licenses. So it's pretty sharp. So um, when you go to the app card, you'll see the option to, uh, I think it's like something like if you have an existing account. So absolutely, definitely an awesome option there. Um, Let's see here. This is from Jeremy and I've been hearing this all over the place. So I'm assuming this is something that we're looking into. Do any of you know, automatically apply existing store credit to an invoice option for reoccurring invoices, templates, 
is it on the devo development road, roadmap? So I'm not sure, Jeremy, if you're the one that requested this, but I've certainly been seeing it talked about. And so usually as people, these are th those are types of things that if we hear it requested more often, we'll build it. So um, I definitely know that it's um, in conversations, pretty much I see it a lot. So I, I think that that's probably optimistic there. Um, let's see. I'm just going to grab a few again while I've got my mic open, but um, Mark, awesome. Thanks for attending today. Um, is there a way to use two outbound addresses, one for billing and the other for support leads? So right now you can have multiple inbound um, using our mailboxes. You can have multiple inbound. We only have one outbound, but the one thing that we've done, um, it doesn't change the email address, but one thing that we've done that is really, really nice is that um, specifically for invoices, if you go to PDF and email templates, you can see here in this invoice template, you have the ability to create more than one and then you can apply templates to specific customers or just have this as like your default you know, invoice template. And this is nice in case you want like this, like the, any of like the information or business information be maybe different or anything like that. So it's a workaround, but that's one of the options that you have now. Awesome. Super helpful. Thank you so much. A question here from Brian. He says, if I add credentials to a contact, not the customer wide credentials tab, but a specific contact and market public, can any or all users of the portal see it when looking at contacts? If not, can that specific user see the credential if they log into the portal? So let me share my screen. I believe you can make it available on a contact per contact basis. So a couple you can yeah you basically what you would need to do is create a portal user permission group first i would recommend doing that and then you can say credentials view mine and then that would mean or unselect view all and select view mine and so once you create that user permission group you can then apply um well, let's kind of just go through the steps. I know we have just a couple minutes left here, but I'll show you real quick. Then you would build the customer portal or the portal user permission, the portal user, excuse me. If we go over to the customer profile and obviously you already have your contacts listed in here and then you scroll down kind of towards the bottom is where it's at and set up the portal user here select which contact and then you can select what level of access that contact has based on the portal group that you already created here in the previous step so then that person would only have access to their own credentials um, so hopefully that helps and then the next question here was also if we add a if we add onboard actions to the policy after it is deployed, does it run those actions on all existing machines? I believe so, yes. So if you go over to your policies, and again, you can create, I think the only one that is gonna be different is like if you create an onboarding type of a policy and then um, you have a setup script, for example, this will be, this will run on a one-time basis. Um, at the when you first install the synchro agent so i think that's the only thing that will run once right at the beginning so if you do if you do make any additional changes after the the agent has deployed it will apply to all of these endpoints yes that's correct We're still waiting on answers. Um, Jeremy and Paco, just to let you guys know, um, it might be after open office hours, but one of us will reach out to you and make sure you get your answers. Yeah, I'm curious, because I was looking, I, um, as far as Jeremy's question, I'm not sure. I was gonna ask for a little bit more from Paco. I'm curious, so, and maybe if anyone else knows this too, uh, you're saying it's this part, open invoice, overdue invoice, paid, these, these, this overview, you're, um, you have a user that's not able to see that. That's what I'm getting, right? I, that's really interesting. I can't, I can't imagine that's only a global admin thing, but I would definitely make sure like the, like it might be a Chrome, like plugin issue every once in a while. Like it's a, I find that it might be a Chrome plugin issue. So if we don't hear anything back, um, I think the main things we try to find out if this was like a global admin type of thing. Um, if not, I'd be curious if she like, 
or whoever it is signs in on like a different computer or something like that if she if they'd be able to see it so i don't know i'm curious i, I have some follow-up questions i also just looked um through our ticket queue since we had some time um to look about canceling a ticket and it looks like it just by canceling the ticket it auto resolves the ticket so it does seem like it's a little bit redundant and does the same thing as resolved um but it looks like right now in the back end that's all that it does so it's just automatically resolved the ticket oh got it okay um Tatiana, are you going? Mm -hmm. Yep. The question here from Brian, he says, how do we build bill contract labor? Sometimes we use contractors that would never have access to Synchro. So yes, if you are working with a contractor that is not an employee, you don't want to put them into the Synchro system as a user. This is the first thing that kind of came to mind for me is you could, um, I was going to say you could build labor, but then that would have to be used on tickets which the contractor would not have access to so i actually don't think that there is a way if somebody is not having access to synchro i don't know how you would charge the time or track the time within there any ideas there i think you would either i mean one thing with contractor specifically i know we did build a feature to where if you go over to the admin section under the security groups you can this was built specifically for that to where you can create like a customer specific type of a user that if they're only working with this specific business for you, for example, an internal IT department, it would give them access to only those endpoints and certain settings that you can adjust. But um, if you have a contractor that's completely working outside of Synchro, I don't think there's a way for obviously them to add any time or do anything within the synchro system if maybe for yourself personally you would want to keep track of those expenses you could create like a contract labor type and then yourself manually either add that onto a manual invoice or whatever it might be just to make sure that you are tracking your expenses your profit and loss um, because yeah you can enter the cost and what you're actually billing your customer or whatever it might be but that would need to be more of a manual setup for yourself um, to to do it that way Awesome. I have a question about can you stop the time or can you enter notes before you stop the timer? So I, this is interesting because I've gotten a couple questions about this just in the last couple days. So if I have my timer going, you'll notice there's no area to type in my notes. I always recommend people just write their notes down in communications, like in a private note if you want to. Um, you could just type them in here. You could create a private note. Uh, you could stop the timer. And then afterwards, if you click view log, you'd be able to enter your notes right here. So you could just copy and paste them in here. I know it takes a couple extra click steps, but um, right now that's what I would recommend doing. Absolutely see a very common use case for being able to type in your notes here uh, while the timer is going. And I'm happy to pass that along. Oh, Crystal, you're muted. <laughs> well, shoot. <laughs> I was thinking I actually unmuted it. <laughs> um, all right. So Matt wants to know, is there a way to set a minimum ticket length per customer? If we work on a ticket for customer A, it only takes four minutes. It will automatically set it to 15. But for customer B, it'll set it to 30. No, that roundup timer is global. So that would that's a cool feature request. I like it. Um, then I, I had another quick one that I was going to grab. In ticket timer log, can we change it to hours, minutes instead of minutes and seconds? So again, I, I don't know on the back end, but I think that's been requested before and I, I feel like there's a reason that it is that way. I just don't know the reason that it is that way, but I don't think we have plans to change that or give it like an option to toggle that. Uh, last thing I just wanted to say out loud, great suggestion from Scott, and I believe this is in reference to adding time from a contractor. Uh, we do have an integration with Toggle. Um, so you might be able to let them track their time there and then import it into the ticket. So Scott, thanks. That's that's a great idea. Awesome. Couple feature requests here that I'll just kind of knock out real quick. Bia says, when I remote into an endpoint via Synchro Live on the remoted endpoint, it has a little window pop-up saying that remote session has been opened, but it doesn't tell who is currently remoting into the endpoint. Is there a way to enable that? 
really good feature request. I've heard that one several times. We'll definitely pass it along. Same thing from Miles. He says it would be nice to be able to stop and start the same timer pause instead of starting new timers. I agree. That way it would keep it all in one single line item. I feel like, again, like Crystal said, sometimes there's certain things that are built in um, and they have a reasoning behind them. I don't know why there isn't a pause button yet, but I have heard that as a feature request. I think it is useful for some of you guys. So I will definitely pass that along as well. Two, to the point of um, the session indicator that pops up, I've also known people to use the broadcast message um, just to say, hey, it's so-and-so because your logo shows up on the broadcast message, and then you can just shoot them a, a quick broadcast message before you remote into their device. It looks really nice, too. Super helpful. Yeah, really good. A good idea. Mm -hmm. um, one question that I'll just grab super quick from Ari, the ticket workflows look useful, but I'm only seeing defaults for basic ticket creation. I just created a ticket from a chat and I can't find where to set the ticket workflow for it. I'll have to look into that because I know like if you create a ticket from like your, um, if you create a ticket from like the uh, quick view modal, like from an asset or something like that, it's going to use your default. So anywhere it's like a quick like grab create a ticket it's going to use whatever you've selected as your default um and i believe that chats would respect that but i can check that since that's kind of a new thing that has been released recently so um i can check on that oh yeah it should but it isn't says ari okay let's look into that let me i'm gonna put that down because yeah we're definitely wanting to know um if there's any issues there so I'm writing that down. Okay, cool. Um, well, uh, if, if for any reason we didn't get to your question, please don't hesitate to reach out to one of us. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today. Happy Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. Please stay safe. And thank you so much. Join us next week, too. Thank you. Yes, you can search assets for pinning reboot. <laughs> yes. Think <Saved> asset searches. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Bye.